Hello there and welcome back to my channel. As 2023 winds down, I wanted to give you an overview of the most exciting Google updates that were released this year that you might have missed, including disabling assignment submission on Google Classroom, click and drag image replacement on Google Slides, stopwatch and timer chips in Google Docs, and a full screen view of Google Tasks. Now, before we jump into it, I do wanna say these are not all of the Google updates that were released this year, just the ones I thought would be most relevant for teachers, and I am not including any updates from December of this year. Also, keep in mind, I'm going to organize these by Google app, so you can easily jump around using the chapters on the video or the timestamps in the description box. We're gonna kick it off with some Google Drive updates, and the first one I wanna highlight are search chips. These allow you to filter your content in Google Drive by file type, owner, or last modified date. Now, you could previously do this through the search bar, but having these dropdowns just makes it much faster and easier. The second update is is folder location organization choices. There is a new drop down menu that lets you choose between the folders always being located at the top or being mixed in with your files. So the one that you choose really comes down to personal preference. I love having my folders at the top, but you may prefer to have everything just in alphabetical order. The last update I wanna highlight is the activity view. This will be available on the navigation pane on the left-hand side of Google Drive, and it's going to show pending access requests, recent comments, and approvals for files. Now let's move on to Google Calendar updates, and there's really only one that I wanna highlight, but it's one that I am so excited about. You can now view Google Tasks in full screen from Google Calendar. So previously, your only options for accessing Google Tasks were through the mobile app on your phone or the side panel within Google Drive or Google Slides or Google Docs, but you did not have a full screen option. There was a Google Chrome extension that would allow you to view it full screen, but it was through a third party and it just wasn't great. Now, within Google Calendar, up in the top right next to the calendar icon, you will see the Google Tasks icon. It's the circle with the check mark. Once you click on that, it's gonna open up your tasks full screen. You can toggle on the left which lists you want to display. You can drag and reorder them. You can add tasks and you can even print lists, which is super, super handy if you are a paper and pencil user. Someone replaced all my pens and pencils with crayons. Now let's move on to Google Docs updates. And the first one I wanna highlight is the tool discovery. Now, in addition to Google Docs, this is also available in Google Slides and Google Sheets, but you can now use the magnifying glass in the toolbar to search for specific tools by describing them. So it's gonna search through the menus and it can be a much faster way to find some of the tools that you need if you don't know exactly where they're located. Now you could previously do this through the help menu, but having that magnifying glass right on the toolbar just makes it a little bit faster. The next update is adding line numbers. In Google Docs, if you go to tools and then line numbers, you can toggle your doc to show the line numbers and then choose the line number mode and where you want it to apply in your file. Now these line numbers are preserved when printing and this might be a helpful tool for you to use for text that you are using with students or even text that your students have written themselves in order to reference specific lines. The next update are variable chips. These are essentially placeholders and once you fill in text in one, it will automatically fill that in everywhere that variable chip is located within your Google Doc. Now this is only available on certain accounts, so check the screen to see if your account is included, but this might be a really helpful tool if you are creating templates where you need to fill in something like a student's name in multiple places. The next update is a stopwatch chip. You can add this to a Google Doc by clicking File, hovering over Smart Chips, and then clicking Stopwatch, or just typing at stopwatch within your Google Doc. But once again, this is only available on some accounts, so check the screen to see if yours is included. Similarly, there are also now timer chips, 
but these are also available on Google Sheets, so we're gonna come back to that when we get to the Google Sheets updates. Another update is the table of contents customization. There are now more formatting options for a table of contents within your Google Doc, including toggling three default styles, toggling page numbers, toggling tab leader style, and including and indenting headings based on levels. And then the final update are some additional table properties. When you add or edit a table within Google Docs, you will now notice a table section in the formatting window on the right side, which makes it easier to adjust your alignment and individual cell formatting. Now let's move on to some Google Slides updates. And this first one I am so excited about you can now click and drag to replace images. So rather than right clicking on the image and choosing replace image or selecting replace image in the toolbar, you can now click and drag an image from your files or downloads and have it automatically replaced in Google Slides. I will say after you click and drag, you do wanna make sure you kind of hover over the image. It'll get a blue outline before you release your mouse in order to replace it. But this is a huge time saver if you utilize Google Slides and need to swap out images pretty frequently. You can do a split screen where you have Google Slides on one side and all of your files on the other, and then you can quickly click and drag to replace the images. The next update is live pointers. This is a feature that allows allows you to see the mice of any collaborators in real time, and it makes it easy to point out specific elements in the presentation. Now this feature is off by default, but it can be turned on by clicking view, hovering over live pointers, and then choosing show my pointers, or using the pointer icon in the toolbar. The next update is emoji reactions to comments. You can now click the emoji button next to a comment on slides in order to insert a reaction. And this feature is also available on Google Sheets as well. The final update that I think is very exciting is being able to co-present Google Slides within Google Meet. This means multiple people can now present together in Google Meet. The primary presenter can assign someone as the co-presenter and they will be able to navigate through the Google Slides the same as the primary presenter. Now this does require the Google Chrome browser and once again, it is only available on certain accounts, so check the screen to see if yours is included. Now let's move on to some Google Sheets updates. The first one is that you can now add multiple chips within a single cell by typing in the at sign. You can also now insert in place chips by typing in at and then the name of the location. Once you insert that place chip, you can click on it and it will open up a mini preview of the map. And once again, this can be used in Google Docs as well. You can also insert date chips. When you type in at date, you will see a few quick options, including today's date and tomorrow's date that make it just a little bit faster. And also chips have been expanded to include YouTube videos. So if you paste the link for a YouTube video, it will actually convert to a chip with the title of that video. And as I mentioned in the Google Docs updates, there are also now timer chips that will allow you to add in a timer for a specified amount of time. Now let's move on to Google Forms updates. And there's really only one that I want to highlight. There are new email collection options. Previously, you could toggle collect email responses on or off, but now you can choose between do not collect, verified, which automatically collects emails and requires users to be logged into a Google account, and responder input, which allows them to manually enter their email. Now let's move on to Google Classroom updates. And if you can't tell, I'm excited. I will try to manage my excitement. Because you can now disable assignment submissions. When you create an assignment, you can choose to either have a strict due date or you can manually disable submissions at any time. Obviously, this is a huge update for teachers because we have all suffered from having assignments submitted weeks and even months after the due date. The other update I do wanna highlight is the grading scale. You can now customize your grading scale within Google Classroom. So you can now select from numerical, letter grade, proficiency, four point scales, and even create your own. But once again, this is only available on some accounts, so check the screen to see if yours is included. Now let's move on to some Google Meet updates. You can now have full HD video calls. You can now set your resolution to be 1080p, and if there is not enough bandwidth to support that resolution, Google Meet will automatically switch over to the highest resolution that it has the bandwidth to support. But once again, 
only available on some accounts, so check the screen to see if yours is included. There is also now quick access to video effects. So if you hover over your video feed within a Google Meet, you can access your backgrounds and filters directly from there, so it just makes it a little bit faster. There is also hand raise detection. So if you physically raise your hand in a Meet, it will trigger the hand raise icon without you having to click it. Now this feature will be off by default, but it can be turned on by clicking options, reactions, and then hand raised gesture. And once again, only available on some accounts, so check the screen to see if yours is included. I'm gonna be saying that a lot this video. You can also now turn off a video feed on select tiles within Google Meet. So let's say someone on a Google Meet has a very distracting background. You can actually turn their video feed off, but no one will know that you've turned it off except for you. So if someone's background is distracting, just select the don't watch option and it will turn off their video feed. Also, if you're joining from a mobile device, you can select the audio only feature and that will automatically turn off all of the video feeds with the exception of anyone who's presenting. There are also now 360 degree video backgrounds. If you access Google Meet from a mobile device, you can now choose from some immersive backgrounds that will actually move with you. But I will say, admins can turn off this feature so if you don't see it available on your account, it could be that your administrator for the account has turned off the feature. Similarly, you can have custom background images. So your admin can choose to have specific background images available for you to use. So you might have some specific to your school or district that have been added in by your administrator. And then finally, there is now portrait touch up. When you join a meet, you can choose between subtle or smoothing to just lightly enhance your appearance. Currently, this is only available on mobile, but it should be available on Google Meet on a computer as well by the end of 2023. But again, only available on some accounts, so check the screen to see if yours is included. And then finally, let's talk about Google Jamboard. In case you missed it, Google announced that Jamboard would be shutting down by the end of 2024, but I'm gonna spare you all the details because I have a full video on the timeline for the shutdown, how to export your existing jams, and some other options for virtual whiteboards to use moving forward. So if you have not already seen that video, I will link it for you in the description box. But that is it. Those are the best updates that have come out of 2023 for all of the different Google apps. I did a similar video at the end of 2022. So if you wanna check out that video, just as a refresher, it will be linked for you in the description box. But I hope this was helpful for you as just an overview. If it was, please give the video a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and notification bell so you do not miss any future videos. Leave any comments that you have down in the comment section and I will do my best to get back to you share it out with your teacher friends who you think might enjoy it too. And as always, thank you for watching. I love you so much. Don't forget to put your positive pants on and I will catch you in the next one.